Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headline. US appeal to extradite Julian Assange upheld. Nicaragua establishes diplomatic ties with China. Columbia University student workers continue strike amid threats and millions across Afghanistan at risk of famine. In our first story, the United States has won its appeal to extradite WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange from the United Kingdom. In January, District Judge Vanessa Beretzer had blocked the extradition, declaring it oppressive on account of Assange's high suicide risk. This was related to his likely imprisonment under isolation at the ADX Supermax prison. U.S. prosecutors appealed Baretsa's ruling during a two-day hearing in October. They have indicted Assange on 18 charges, including 17 counts under the Espionage Act. These are related to the publishing of classified government documents on WikiLeaks between 2010 and 2011. Assange exposed widespread abuses by the U.S. military, including footage of a 2007 airstrike on Baghdad, which killed at least nine civilians. If convicted, he could face up to 175 years in prison. Outrage against his transfer to the United States also grew following reports of a CIA plot to abduct and assassinate him. After the extradition request was blocked, the U.S. offered four assurances in Assange's case. Prosecutors stated that Assange would not be held under solitary confinement and would be transferred to Australia to serve his sentence. Assange's defense team has rejected such assurances as conditional, vague and meaningless. However, these assurances were accepted by the UK High Court on Friday. The case will now return to Westminster Magistrates Court and then formally sent to Home Secretary Preeti Patel for approval. Assange's fiancé Stella Morris has stated that they will appeal the ruling, calling it a grave miscarriage of justice. Assange has been held at the Belmarsh prison since 2019. Nicaragua has formally de-recognized Taiwan and established diplomatic ties with China. The government of President Daniel Ortega has declared that the People's Republic of China as the only legitimate government and that Taiwan was an inalienable part of Chinese territory. Both countries signed a joint communique and held a meeting in the city of Tianjin on December 10th. They have agreed to establish ties based on mutual non-interference peaceful coexistence and respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity. Nicaraguan presidential advisor Loriano Ortega stated that the country is willing to take an active part in China's Belt and Road Initiative. Foreign Minister Denis Colindres also rejected the use of unilateral coercive measures and stressed Nicaragua's belief in a multipolar world. Nicaragua's Sandinista government had first cut ties with Taiwan and recognized Beijing in 1985. However, this was reversed when President Violeta Chamorro came to power in 1990. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi stated on Friday that some countries continued to maintain ties with Taiwan due to cash diplomacy and pressure from the United States. Nicaragua and China's decision was announced just as the U.S. held its Summit for Democracy. Taiwan was invited to attend the event while China was not. The exclusion of certain countries was criticized by Chinese and Russian diplomats as evidence of the United States' Cold War mentality. Next, we look at the ongoing strike by student workers at Columbia University in the United States. Around 3,000 graduate and undergraduate students walked out on November 3rd to demand better wages and labor protections. Organized by student workers of Columbia, this is the largest active strike in the U.S. right now. However, in an email sent out last week, the university informed students that their positions would be replaced if they continued striking beyond December 10th. In response to this threat, striking students set up a major picket line and declared a shutdown on campus on December 8th. They were joined by other labor unions, including Teamsters and students from New York University, City University of New York, and Fordham University. Ahead of the fall semester, Columbia unilaterally cut down the lump sum stipend given to graduate workers from $10,600 to $2,600. According to the union, student workers are already paid up to $18,000 below an annual living wage in New York City. Meanwhile, Columbia ended its fiscal year with a $150 million operating surplus. 
the union filed two charges of unfair labor practices against the university with National Labor Relations Board. Workers are demanding a minimum wage of $45,000 for first-year doctoral students on one-year appointments. They have also demanded a yearly pay increase of 3% and a $26 minimum wage for hourly workers. Other key demands include third-party arbitration for cases of discrimination and harassment and comprehensive health care coverage. And for our final story, we look at the worsening hunger crisis in Afghanistan. Around 22.8 million people in the country are at risk of facing life-threatening levels of food insecurity this winter. Out of this, 8.7 million people are nearing famine. The country is undergoing its worst drought in decades, which has now hit 25 out of its 34 provinces. Farmers in rural areas have been forced to give up cultivation and the wheat harvest is expected to be up to 25% below average. As compared to 2020, crisis levels of food shortage in Afghanistan grew by 30% in September and October this year. Aid groups have warned that the impending catastrophe could kill up to 1 million children by the end of 2021. The crisis in Afghanistan has steadily worsened since the Taliban seized power. The aid-dependent economy has collapsed after the World Bank and the IMF froze $1.5 billion in foreign funds under U.S. pressure. $9.5 billion in central government reserves have also been cut off. The lack of funds have severely impacted critical medical and public services. The World Bank's board has reportedly backed the transfer of $280 million in frozen funds to the World Food Programme and UNICEF. However, concerns remain about the potential exposure of the transactions to sanctions. Despite claims of humanitarian exemptions, sanctions and overcompliance by third parties have routinely re restricted critical aid to countries. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.